Fabian, a friend of mine from Israel, wrote in. On the Sabbath, it felt like 1973 all over again. We woke up the distant thunder of missiles and Iron Dome interceptors. Something big was on, but our devices were off because of Shabbat. And so only our neighbors in the security services knew how big this was. We walked to morning prayers. Not halfway through, the local border guard officer interrupted the service to say an exceptional event was unfolding and we should get the children inside the house. Terrorists had infiltrated in large numbers and were moving through the countryside. And we started seeing our friends and our neighbors wearing green uniforms instead of holiday white heading off to serve. The Sabbath, overridden by the need to protect life, one stopped and told us, go home. In the afternoon, we heard machine guns over the horizon. A cell must have gotten close. It is ugly. It's as ugly as it's ever been in my lifetime. We're in total shock. Same kind of shock from 1973. The same complete failure of intelligence, complete inadequacy of border protection systems, utter shock of the burning tank we thought this enemy could never defeat. It's the same enemy we thought. Then also, we thought they would never dare something like this. It's 1948, the Independence War. Villages invaded, residents slaughtered wherever they were found. Here also, the same enemy is now village streets are full of bodies, women and children massacred in their homes. Teenagers made go made to go door to door to get the residents to open their house so they could all be killed execution style more easily. Hostages, including soldiers, but also once again women, children, grandmothers, taken to Gaza to face God only knows what fate. Shock is still profound and anger, lots of it. Grief has started mixing in as the funerals have started today. As a dad, my four children are still small. The youngest is six, the oldest 11. My oldest boy is eight. So when I think about them, I thank God we don't live near Gaza. My children are safe now. I have no illusions about what could happen to them if Hamas got their hands on them. I'm proud of my children. They are scared. We don't show them the images and we don't let them listen to the news, but we also don't lie to them. The thunder over the horizon is not really thunder, and they know it. They see the neighbors in uniforms leaving the village to go serve. They know there's a war on. They know we were attacked. They know hundreds are dead. They grasp it at the level of a child, but they know it. We tell them the truth without gory details and always accompanied with our advice to trust God and the IDF. But we do tell them the truth. We tell them that it's okay to be afraid. And the best way to deal with fear is to not pretend it doesn't exist or that scary things don't. The best way is to look fear straight in the eyes and tell them we're bigger than it is. It's not going to get the better of us. Lo and behold, all of this seems to actually help. They are brave. They're patient, well-behaved for the situation. Yes, they have nightmares. They're cooped up in a locked house for way too long, and that gets loud. But I'm proud of them. I'm a proud Israeli father. Glenn, thank you for your prayers, for what it's worth. You and your family in America are in my prayers daily. America is in its own dark and ugly times of its own right now. Much of it, it seems, by design, and it might get worse before it gets better. But I have hope. May God bless and keep you. Fabian. Jason uh, Buttrill, who is our chief researcher, also was uh, military intelligence, is here to tell us, how did they get in, Jason? Well, Glenn, it was, a, it was an unprecedented event. I would say impossible, but only impossible if it was just 
a few random terrorists within the Gaza Strip, but that's not what this was. This was an Iranian-backed, Iranian-planned, Iranian-coordinated plot uh, to pull this off. Uh, they came in uh, from multiple areas. They came in from the sea, uh, boats from the from the sea. They came in from paragliders through the air, and they came in through a, a, a very coordinated and sophisticated attack from the land. Uh, they first used drones uh, to knock out um, observation towers along the border. Uh, they then fired a barrage of rockets uh, to distract um, across the border, and then they went in uh, with explosives, IEDs, on the border fences. Um, I was in uh, this exact same area and in some of the exact same towns that were hit the hardest um, when we opened up our, our our embassy in Israel. And the IDF spokesman then, he's been making several announcements uh, over the past weekend, predicted this exact same thing. He said, if we're not here, if we don't respond the way we're responding, they will come into these areas, they will hit these towns. That's exactly what they did. And it's absolutely insane that we're seeing the response that we're seeing from Western governments today, um, offering just random support, even though why they do in the background is they you know, give funding to, uh, to Hamas uh, through Palestine. I mean, the, the, the reactions and the way that they've uh, responded to this has been absolutely atrocious. And what we should be doing is there was a blueprint for this, Glenn. There was a this did not have to happen. There was a blueprint for, for this not to happen. It was the Abraham Accords. It was exactly what the Trump administration had set forth. Um, I, I saw the State Department talking about recently how there had been unprecedented peace. Well, yeah, <laughs> of course there had been because there was a, actually a good plan to do this, but you abandoned it. You abandoned it when you started going back back to Iran and and um, and incentivizing them to do what they're doing now. And it was absolutely insane how we saw over the weekend. You saw how uh, Kirby and uh, the rest of the State Department were trying to backtrack furiously and saying, "Oh no, the six billion we gave did nothing. It, you know, it was it's in a secure account in Doha, and you know, it's for Jeez. it was for health aid and you know and humanitarian aid." Well, what do you think they're going to divert their funds to once they knew that they didn't have to divert all the other money, the billions of dollars to medicine and food and all that other? What do you think they were going to divert that money to? Terrorist attacks. And that's what they did. It's shameful. It's absolutely shameful. Uh, by the way, here is Iran was having a military parade um, and uh, it aired on Channel One in Iran. Um, we got this from. Uh, memory TV. Cut three, please. We have come here to tell the elder of Khomeini that Israel will be raised from the face of the earth. Death to Israel. The officials of the Zionist regime make a mistake. The Islamic Republic will raise Tel Aviv and Haifa to the ground. This is... Uh, very clear and we're going to go into uh where this all comes from uh, you know i've been saying for years that the next holocaust will come from iran uh they are serious about uh raising israel and vanishing the jew uh here's the hamas leader to the jews also from memory this is airing now on television all throughout the Middle East. It's, this is our call to our resistance, to our West Bank, to our people. Our resistance abroad, our strategic allies, the sons of this nation. Today is your day. We are on the verge of victory. Let us be partners in creating this great victory. In conclusion, we say to the enemy that is making threats and going on a rampage, your threats, rampage, and arrogance did not, will not help you. We say one thing, get out of our land. Get out of our faces. Get out of our Jerusalem and our Al-Aqsa Mosque. We do not want to see you on this land. This land is ours. Jerusalem is ours. Everything is ours. 
So I think it's pretty clear, um, you know, what they want. And I don't think it's a two-state solution. Uh, maybe people will listen. Now, these same people say uh, different things, uh, you know, when they're speaking in English. But that's why we go to uh, Memory, which is a, uh, a, an organization that translates all of the news into English so you can read the subtitles. You know exactly what they're saying. And they are very, very, very clear. Here is uh, cut five. Hamas, a commander calling for more attacks. Listen to this. In light of the continuous crimes against our people, and in light of the occupation's rampage and its disregard for international laws and resolutions, and in light of the American and Western support of Israel and the international silence, we have decided to put an end to all of this with the help of Allah. So the enemy understands that the time it could go on a rampage without being held accountable is over. We declare the beginning of Operation Al-Aqsa Deluge to say to our young people in the West Bank from the various organizations, today is your day to sweep out the occupiers and their settlements. Uh, from all of our lands in the West Bank to make them pay the price for their crimes over the lean years. Organize your attacks on the settlements with all your means at your disposal. Torch the earth under the feet of the plundering occupiers. Kill, burn, destroy, and shut down roads. Make the cowardly occupiers understand that the Al-Aqsa deluge is bigger than they think. The day has come when anyone who has a gun should take it out. Now is the time. If you don't have a gun, take up your cleaver or your axe, Molotov cocktail, truck, tractor, or car. They also go on to uh, say all of those who are living now in Western lands. This leads uh, to the question... How many people are here from Iran, from Hamas, from Hezbollah, from anybody who wishes us ill? We know, the, um, according to the Border Patrol, that 80, 80 people that were on our most wanted terrorist uh, list, 80 have come across the border that we caught. How many are on the terrorist list that we didn't catch? We're about, you know, I thought about it this morning. This is, I've always heard the phrase, you know, elections have consequences. This is the most consequential election of my lifetime, 2020. We have depleted uh, all of our resources uh, because we have Joe Biden in power. The world is on fire the the oil shortage that is here, the munitions shortage that we have. Let me bring um, Jason back in in one minute to talk just about how are we going to respond um, and what could we possibly give them because we've given so much already to Ukraine. This seems to be, in my opinion, exactly what the Soviet Union uh, what happened to them? They're doing to us what we did to the Soviet Union. Can you play cut eight as we go back to uh, uh, Jason? Um, this is the Palestinian supporters march in New York City. Uh, then we have the Palestinian supporters march in Europe. Uh, same thing. Uh, Europe is in trouble. I think we're in trouble because we don't know who is who is here. And how are we going to be able to fight on two fronts if we were to get involved in any kind of war? Jason. Sorry, seeing that is absolutely disgusting. That, that That's the equivalent of during the during the World War Two, if we had known about 
what was happening to Jews and then people marching in the streets of New York, parading and, and glorifying the Nazis. That is absolutely disgusting. And you should be ashamed of yourself. May I just say the same thing is true. Hitler said what he was going to do with the Jews. So does Hamas. So yeah. does Hezbollah. So does Iran. So does Syria. They're very, very clear what they're going to do to the Jews. Kill them believe them. Yeah, but kill, yeah. believe them when they say they're going to do this. Yeah. Our response is going to be uh, limited. I mean, we don't really have the resources to respond. Um, we've never really directly responded anyway. We've, we've provided weapons. Uh, we've provided, you know, basically, a, you know, a big stick in the background to sit, you know, to wave it around to make sure that nobody else gets involved. And that's what we're going to do here. We're, we're going to sit probably off the coast with an aircraft carrier. I think there's already one yeah, inbound. But we're going to hope that Iran doesn't directly get involved. If they direct, they're indirectly involved right now because they're using a proxy. They're using Hamas. They're using another group called Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Um, they're using those groups within uh, the Gaza Strip uh, to wage this war. That's what they're doing now. Will they directly get involved? That is the question right now. And that's when we'll step in. I hope that that does not happen, but let, 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 I, I don't. I, I don't want to be like every other Western analyst that's looking at this. Um, the, I've been trained in the same way that they have to look at this, and they never account for the wild the, the wild card. They never account for the crazy man. They don't. They never account for the Hitler. That's what we're looking at with Israel right now. There is a wild card. Don't be uh, don't be fooled in thinking that there. This is not deeply religious. This is deeply religious. This is not about geopolitics with Israel. That's what's so drastically different from, say, something like Ukraine. This is drastically different.